Hey everyone, it's Anthony from Pretty Print It here. In today's video, I'll be talking about how I approach laying out a page using Bulma. So in the last video, I introduced Bulma. In this video, I'll talk about the layout. And in the next video, I'll cover the second part of layout, which is tiles. But in this video, I'll cover containers, columns, sections, and levels. So first thing I'll do is just to make my page display something, like right now it's empty. The code is just loading the CSS, which doesn't make any changes visually, I'm going to simply add a hero and a footer. So I'll just take the hero from here and I'll put it in the body and then I'll do the same thing with the footer. So let me just go here to footer and I'll just take the footer that they have here and put it in my code. And this is just to show you what's going on because looking at a blank white page isn't very interesting. So I'll save that and I'll refresh. And now we see I have the hero up here and the footer down here. And I guess the first thing I can talk about is the container. So the container kind of centers everything in a particular element or feature of Bulma. So in this particular case, we have a hero and a footer, and we see that the text for the hero starts over here instead of all the way to the left and we see that the text for the footer is centered. So none of the text is anywhere near the sides of the page, but if I remove the container, then that is exactly what would happen. So I'll take the container out of the header just to show you what happens. We see that the primary title moves all the way over to the left. And that's because it no longer has the container centering it. So normally it's a good idea to center things on the page, uh, most websites don't have things go all the way from one side to the other. Instead, you have the page kind of centered and there's a bit of dead space on both the left and the right hand sides. It just looks a little better. Although if you wanted to have everything go all the way across the page, you could. It's completely up to you. But this is uh, just the approach that I take and the approach that Bulma takes. So I'll put that container back and we see how the primary title moves over. If I wanted to have the entire hero section in a container, what would happen is the color part would be centered and outside of that would just be white space. So I'll show you that. What I'll do is I'll move the container outside of the section that defines the hero and I'll remove, take that second div tag out. And then when I refresh this, we see that it still has a text in the same spot, but the color for the hero section is in the center here instead of all the way over to the side. So this may work for you, it may not. Uh, just know that if you want it to look like this, then you put the container outside of the hero. And if you don't want it to look like this, then you will put the container inside of the hero. So let me just put everything back and refresh. And it's just adding this div for me. And now it's there. So the first thing I want to talk about with layout, other than the container, of course, is the section. So the section is a way to divide up the page into sections in a way that each section is kind of its own row or rows. So this is creating horizontal parts of your page. So you're looking at it from top to bottom. So you can have a section at the top, a section in the middle, and a section at the bottom. So this is top to bottom, and I'll show you what it looks like. I'll use the example that they have here, and I'll just take this section, and I'll put it in between my hero and my footer. And when I do that, we see that the section goes here in the middle. So I'm not thinking about columns yet, I'm more thinking about rows. So generally when you're laying out a page, you'll know what the page is going to look like from top to bottom. So maybe you'll have a hero section, then you'll have like three or four regular sections, and then you'll have a footer at the bottom. And inside of those three or four regular sections that you have, that's where the content of your page is going to go. In this particular case, I have one. If I wanted to add another, I would just duplicate the code. And then we see it gives me another one. And a nice thing about this is it just gives you some spacing in between the sections. If you didn't use the sections, then things would be a lot closer together and it just wouldn't look as good. So 
you see how there's a bit of a gap between the bottom of the hero here and the top of the text for a section here. That is just to give it some space to stand out on its own. If you didn't have the section there, let me remove uh, the section class. So basically they recommend that you use the section HTML tag and then along with it, you use the section class. So I remove the section class for the first section and we see it goes all the way up to the bottom of the hero. And it just doesn't look as good because it's too close. But when I add that class back, then it gives me that spacing that makes it look a lot better. So you'll probably use sections in your page and the reason for this is because, you know, all pages that you make are going to have some kind of order from top to bottom. Now, in terms of things going from left to right, that's where it can be uh, depending on what you are creating. So let me just format this. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to divide up the first section into columns. So the columns are basically, you know, you can have as many columns as you like. Um, it's based off a 12 column grid system. So you can divide the columns into things that are parts of 12. So for example, you can have three columns, they would be four widths or four columns wide in a sense. Um, you can have two columns and they will both be six. You can have 12 columns that are one and so on. So I'll demonstrate that. What I'm gonna do is I'm going to put these columns inside of the section here. So inside of the container, and I'll just remove the section and format this and refresh. And now we see four columns. So first column, second column, third column, fourth column. And to just show you where the columns begin and end, what I'll do is I'll put some color with it. So notification is primary. And we'll see what happens. So you see here the first column is in red and the third column is in the primary color, which is kind of like a greenish color. And then the second and fourth columns are blue. And I can change the width of those columns by just using is and then a number. So if I say is six for the third column, that column is going to take up six widths or six columns. And then the other three will have to use the other six because six plus six is 12. So the other three will be divided up equally and they will have a width of two. So when I do this, we see that three of the columns are small. So the first, second and fourth column are small and the third column is wider. It is three times as much as any individual one and it is half of the total width. So you can put anything you want in a column. Um, it's just more information and I'll just repeat this a few times and I didn't mean to put a video there and then we see how the other columns will increase their vertical space because the fourth column takes up more space so just keep that in mind, like all the columns are going to try to take up the same amount of vertical space. So when you're creating your pages, you know, you want to keep in mind how much each column will have in it. So things are balanced on the page. So another thing that I can do is I can use levels. So levels in a sense are one way to have columns, but the main appeal for levels is that you can have one element on one side and then another element on the other side. So what I mean by this is you can have something on the left hand side of the level and something else on the right hand side. And then in the middle, there will be a bunch of empty space. So what I'll do is I'll go back to the documentation and I'll go to layouts and level. And I'll just take the level that they have here. So I'm just using the code that they have for simplicity purposes. But of course, when you're writing code yourself, it would be completely custom. So I'll put this in the second section here and format this. And we see this thing here is a level. So know how on the 
left hand side we have this one two three post and then a search box and then there's this empty space in the middle and then we have the links here on the right hand side so it gives us the ability to add things to the right when we already have something to the left so if i take out the stuff to the right then we see it just remains on the left and if i take out the things on the left so let's see it starts here and remove it then everything gets moved to the left so you have to have something on the left but once you do have something on the left then you can have something on the right and if you want to have something in the middle then it will start adding things from the side that you're interested in but when you have more than two it begins to be more centered and left and right become less obvious so like right now i just added a second thing on the right and it's going to be the exact same thing that is here so refresh and we see it gets added in the middle because it's just trying to use up the available space now and it's no longer concerned with keeping things on the left and the right. Now it's more concerned with just keeping things kind of equally spaced in the middle. So with that, there is the level, the columns, and the container and you see how they can accomplish different things. So I didn't cover any of the CSS classes and the reason why I didn't do that is because I think the documentation is fairly clear. If anybody wants me to explain more about the classes, uh, you can just let me know and I can give you more information about that. But I just want to show you how I think about the layout. So basically, when I use a container, I'm thinking about centering everything. When I use columns, I need to divide up the page into a number of columns. When I use levels, I put something to the left and something to the right, or I can just have things that are kind of equally spaced apart. But in that case, it's going to be pretty similar to columns, depending on what you're doing. And then finally, I use sections to break up the page uh, going from top to bottom. So that's really all I want to cover in this video. In the next video, I want to cover how to use tiles because tiles are a little more complicated. So that's what I'll cover in the next video. So see here we have the tiles and when you have something like this, you have to put things in a particular order in your HTML. Otherwise, you won't get the look that you're going for. But that's the thing that I'll cover in the next video. So if you have any questions about this, you can always leave a comment down below and I'll answer it. If you like this video, please give me a thumbs up. And if you haven't subscribed to my channel already, please subscribe. So thank you for watching and I will talk to you next time.